Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this special Memorial Day edition of Diecast Emporium. Truth be told, I'm not really filming this on Memorial Day, but when this goes live and when you guys will be able to see it, it will be Memorial Day, so let me be the first to extend a very, very heartfelt congratulations and admiration for all of the family of the servicemen and women throughout our nation's history who have paid with their lives and given the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our nation's freedoms over the uh, history of the United States and our wonderful country. I know, unfortunately, as I'm sure many of you have been connected to this personally and know many friends and uh, maybe in some cases some former colleagues that have unfortunately uh, given the ultimate sacrifice. But that's what this holiday is truly about. It is not about thanking a veteran. That, of course, is for Veterans Day. So not to get the two confused, which is so irritating to see, honestly, on some news networks and uh, even out in everyday life where you see people thanking veterans today and uh, even veterans. Every single veteran that I have ever met, that I have ever known or been associated with, they will even tell you this first and foremost, that they get irritated when uh, they are thanked for their service on Memorial Day, because that is not what this day is about. That, of course, is Veterans Day. This, our most solemn of all of our holidays, is about specifically thinking of the families and, more importantly, those that have given the ultimate sacrifice in defense of this country's liberties and freedoms. So with that out of the way, for this special edition of Diecast Emporium, I know it wasn't a really huge success or very popular series on this channel, which is unfortunate because I really enjoyed kind of mixing genres and passions of mine with military history, military vehicles, and uh, scale models and kind of bringing you Military Mondays. But to put uh, the final say on that series, what I thought I would do is show off my 1-87 to scale military vehicle collection, modern era military vehicle collection. All of these vehicles that you will see are number one in HO scale or 187 scale, and uh, number two are still in service with the United States military today. So they are current, they are active, and uh, you will see them not only deployed abroad, but also across military bases around the world and, of course, stateside. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. The first one that I will show you is probably everybody's favorite, and that is, of course, the M1 Abrams tank. This version, or this particular scale model that you are seeing, uh, this is from the Corgi series, and uh, this is based on a tank from Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003, so you can see the marking and the weathering that's associated with this. Uh, this is one of my nicer models that I have in this series, just because of the factory weathering job, the uh, allied markings that's all on this, and obviously, uh, of course, the dirt and grime that you would see Pretty much everything is, is included uh, from a Middle Eastern battlefield aside from the stench, of course. So this is really nice. It does come in its own display case. So if you ever have a chance to pick up any of these uh, Forces of Valor series from, from Corgi, I highly encourage you to do so. Now the M1 Abrams tank is, of course, our foremost fighting main battle tank that has been in service since the 1980s. It's gone through several renovations and upgrades, obviously, to keep it current with some of the technology associated with the M1 Abrams tank, but suffice to say that uh, it is quite a formidable beast, and uh, we have yet to see anything, thank God, knock on wood, that uh, that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it, so that's always good to see. Again, for the model, it can rotate 360 degrees. You have your main gun, and then you also have your, I believe that is a 50 cal uh, for your secondary armament up on top of the turret. I do have another version. This is from Bully. This is slightly more affordable. Again, you do see these quite frequently. Not quite as nice. This does have the toy-like guide wheels underneath, so you can roll this around. These are very easy to pick up, and if you are looking to outfit a military train in HO scale, you can buy up a bunch of these, uh, or at least you used to be able to, for under $3 each, so it's really easy to do that. Or for those war gamers, I know there are some of you that still exist that like to do that. Again, these are very easy to come by and very inexpensive. Number two on our list is the M2 and M3 series Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. Again, those of you that are not in the know, this may look like a tank. It is not a tank. This is an APC or an armored personnel carrier designed to support uh, forward combat elements such as the Abrams tank. These really showed 
uh, their 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 prowess and showed their value during the first Gulf War uh, in 1991, where they were able to keep up with the Abrams and support, obviously, the main forward elements. They can carry a full troop size in the back of the tank. Obviously, the, the gate folds down, and uh, it does have a Bushmaster chain gun for its main armament, not necessarily a... Uh, a, a 105 cannon, obviously, but a bus matcher. I think it's a 30 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, it does do enough to defend itself. And also on the left side of the turret, it does have a tow missile launcher. So if it needs to, if it does run into a, a T-72, for example, or a T-62 tank, Russian tank that wants to put up a fight, it can defend itself uh, if need be, if there are no Abrams around. Number three on our list is the M109 155 millimeter self propelled gun, newer versions known as the Palatin. This thing has been in the U.S. arsenal since the Vietnam War. Obviously, it's gone through some changes. This is very effective as a base of fire artillery unit, uh, but we are upgrading these currently. The United States military and government is upgrading these actually as um, ground-to-air intercepting vehicles where they can actually intercept vehicles. Um, missiles and things that are coming around. You can obviously read about that online. The articles are not classified, so it's pretty interesting to see. The model for this was actually built uh, by me. It's a it's a resin cast kit, and you do have to assemble it. You do have to paint it. What I really like about it is the subtle details, and I left the turret unglued, obviously, so to show you some of the little details, such as the ammo boxes up on top, the gun, uh, the fact that you can leave the, the hatch up or down, this side, you have some jerry cans, of which I have painted some in olive drab and others to match the tank in tan. Uh, you do have some little smoke grenades to help shield the tank. So just some nice casted-in details on here that look really good. You also have these on the back that would go down that help support the uh, M109 once it's set up. All right, number four on our list is the M103 Armored Personnel Carrier. Speaking of pieces of equipment that have been in the arsenal since B the Vietnam War. This is a love or hate it, hate it piece of military history, military hardware. Uh, they were not very initially well received in Vietnam due to the first ones not being able to withstand uh, kind of RPGs or direct anti-tank mines. And uh, also they weren't really conducive to traveling very well through the very condensed uh, Japanese and Southeast Asia jungle. But since they have really served uh, their, their purpose and, and really kind of shown their stripes very well in the Middle East in terms of being support vehicles uh, for the larger um, mechanized vehicles, such as being, you know, a, um, a repair vehicle, a command and control network vehicle, a medic vehicle as well. So they're not necessarily today so much is used as armored personnel carriers to carry, you know, a, a squad of troops around, but they are very useful for um, mobile combat teams for just carrying stuff and supplies around to support the, the larger army. All right, number, what are we on? Number five? Yeah. Number five is a very interesting piece of equipment. This is the M9 Ace. A stands for Armored Combat Earth Mover. This is, again, something that's used in the predominantly the Army and their, their uh, combat engineering battalions, for example. So if you need a defensive position built for your tank, for example, or you want a building destroyed, or plethora, just name whatever application you need. This is the machine that can do it. It's kind of a mix between a bulldozer and a scraper. Throw in a little bit of a tank, although it has no defensive or I should say no offensive armament. It does have a small smoke screen should it need to uh, disguise itself if it comes into trouble and needs to kind of escape. But uh, it has a blade that can raise up in the front, which acts as the, as the, the dozing blade, but also it can load itself much like a front loader can and push itself along like a scraper can. Uh, this is also a kit that needs to be assembled. I believe this one was made by Trident Miniatures, if I'm not mistaken. And this, as most of my model kits are, were sprayed with modern era desert uh, desert sand, which is a Tamiya paint color. Some of the other small details, 
You have a little visibility screen that pops up and down. I mentioned before, you got to be very careful, but this does open and close. I added a, a little antenna, which truth be told, kind of funny, although it scales out perfectly, is a discarded cat whisker uh, that I painted black. Kind of funny, but it scales out perfectly. Hey, use what's around, right? Sticking with the theme of military. Um, but overall, it's pretty nice. has a tow hitch on the back. You can take this little segment out uh, if you want to put a figure standing up at the rear. Okay, number six. This is also a model kit that I built. One of my favorite pieces of military hardware. This thing, again, has been around for several decades. Uh, the newer ones are the A3 versions. This is the A2 version of the M88 Hercules, which is a... Uh, recovery vehicle, armored recovery vehicle, specifically used to recover damaged tanks or vehicles that have been hit by improvised explosive devices, anti-tank mines, that kind of thing. Think of it as a mix between a tow truck and a crane. It has a large arch-style crane winch uh, that is used to, as I mentioned before, lift up vehicles that have been damaged. Or if they're just in need of some serious service, like, for example, you need some of these wheels put on um, the undercarriage of a tank, for example. You can do that actually under fire in the in the field of battle. So that's what this thing is used for. Number seven, we have the MLRS, which is another one of those fancy military jargon acronyms for the Mobile Launch Rocket System. Again, something that's been around for decades, and we still see these. This thing is capable of firing 12 rockets um, at once. So ground to land rockets, or sorry, land to air rockets uh, if, if need be. And uh, we saw these in the first Gulf War. They were pretty, I, I, would, I would say they were somewhat successful at intercepting Scud missiles. They uh, they were able to shoot a couple down. As far as how it works, it obviously drives to the site. This deploys. It can rotate 360 degrees. Here you can see there are six on each side, and uh, they can obviously be fired individually, or if need be, they can all be discharged as once at once. There would be a supply truck next to it as well. And with the help of a few guys, you can change this out, I believe, in about 15 minutes. It used to be about 15 minutes. Perhaps it's quicker now. But uh, a very useful piece of ground-to-air defense. Now we have the Patriot missile system, but these are still around and still in active duty. All right, next up, we have the Striker. Now, the Striker system was the U.S. Army's answer to the... The Marines LAV. Now this striker is the the M1128 MGS version, the mobile gun system version. So this has a very large gun on top of it, obviously. But most strikers are used to carry a platoon of soldiers around. They were very, very, very successful uh, in Fallujah in 2004 in Iraq, and then since, obviously, in our in our little adventures in the in the Middle East. Like I said, normally strikers don't have this huge gun on it unless it is the, the mobile gun version, which this is. This is a matchbox for real working rigs that I have disassembled and obviously chosen to do a little work on it. It's not totally completed yet. I did want to leave the, the top gun per gun portion, the turret, the main gun, etc., in a green or an olive drab color. The reason I wanted to do that is because this mimics one of these that I've seen in real life. Uh, the, the, the main body portion of the truck or, or the, the vehicle was tan, but the top portion was being replaced and they had not had a chance to spray it yet. So it was a green or olive drab color. Also, these strikers, if you see them, obviously uh, in, in the wild, as I like to call it, or in a, in a military war zone, in a combat zone, they normally will have the cage around it. And that's to protect against incoming RPGs or again, IEDs. Off the, the, the main, obviously, issues that you run into and find against. But the striker system has been very successful, and there are entire platoons in the Army based just on striker combat teams. All right, next up, we have the Buffalo, which is a very specific type of vehicle with a very specific job. This uh, EOD teams use, which stands for Explosive Ordnance Disposal, so if there is a aforementioned roadside bomb or an IED, which we've already talked about a lot in this video, 
Teams of uh, explosive ordnance disposal experts, bomb techs, would go out and safely find the device and dispose of it appropriately, usually in MRAP vehicles such as the Buffalo. And it has a large arm which would go out and find the device and either detonate it or disarm it, whatever this situation would call for. This is another Matchbox Real Working Rigs casting that I have sort of started working on, disassembling it, spraying it, etc. It does scale out close to HO scale. It's a little bit small, but again, if you're having a collection or setting up a, a National Guard or an EOD team or, or whatever, if you're setting up a yard, it looks just fine. It's Again, it's not exactly HO scale, but it's close enough, and it does have a lot of working functionality, which really adds to the value, in my opinion. All right, speaking of MRAP vehicles, how about this one? This is the Oshkosh MATV, and MRAP, again, is another acronym, which you'll find a lot of if you're in the government or, you know, the military, uh, stands for Mine Resistant Ambush Protectant. So this was really the, the idea was for this to replace the Humvee. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen for quite a while completely. You'll still probably see Humvees for the next at least 10 years, probably more than that. Uh, but the idea was these are a lot, a uh, lot safer. They also have a V-shaped hull underneath, and that is to safely, really, what's the word I'm looking for here? I'm kind of struggling here, to safely absorb a blast from underneath without it, without the crew taking the brunt of it. So M wraps, Cougars, Buffaloes, all of those type of vehicles. Huskies are another one. They're all in that same kind of family um, that have been developed really since. 2001, um, with obviously everything going on in Afghanistan and then Iraq. These vehicles are a result of the carnage that we've seen with deuce and a half, five ton trucks, um, unarmored military convoys, and obviously Humvees. That's really what we've seen. All right, next on the list, we have number 11, the Hemet, and I have a couple different versions of this as well. There are many, 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 many different variants of the Hemet in the real world. Uh, Hemet, another acronym, stands for Heavy Expanded Mobility Tactical Truck. Again, been around since the 80s, will probably be around for several more decades. This version has a crane on the rear, so obviously it can offload cargo that's in the back. There's also a version that has a crane right here. There's a palletized loading system that literally will load off cargo much like a uh, container truck would. This is a fuel system truck. Another one is a water truck that you would see the Air Force use. Um, tons of different variations, really, of the of the Hemet. There's also a low boy version, for lack of a better term, that literally can pull a low boy trailer with pieces of heavy engineering equipment, such as bulldozers, uh, wheel loaders, that kind of thing. But these are two different versions. This is by Bully. This version is by Rocco Mini Tanks. Pretty much stock. Haven't really done anything to it, which is why it's in olive drab and not tan. So it really doesn't match anything. But again, if you've ever seen a military convoy, or particularly if you've ever had the opportunity to go on base, you will more often than not see vehicles that are olive drab, camo, as well as tan. Not everything is always going to be in the same color. All right, that's it for... Our Hemets, number 12, we have, I believe I mentioned this just a little while ago, we have our deuce and a half and our five-ton trucks. You will get nowhere in a modern military without these vehicles, and they have been around really since the beginning of mechanized vehicles. You can really trace their origins back to World War I if you really wanted to, but really, they, ca they really came into prominence in World War II. So this is a deuce and a half, a two and a half ton truck. This is a five ton truck, the newer kind, um, by SNS. And this is obviously one that's made by um, Oshkosh, I believe, back in the back in the day. Anyway, these trucks carry everything from guys, gears, guns, food, just about anything you can think of. More often than not, they are in large supply convoys. They're usually protected by gun trucks. Back in the day, it used to be Humvees. Um, maybe some trucks like this that may have some 50 cals up on top, things like that. Nowadays, a lot of times they will have your MRAPs, that kind of thing, protecting them. So in the, in the military, in the government, these are what's known as soft targets. That's why the enemy likes to attack these so easily is because 
If you're able to hit a soft target like a supply convoy, you're going to essentially create a choke point where you're going to bog the whole um, advancing force down because obviously you're going to have a QRF, a quick reaction force coming to aid these guys. These guys aren't going to be able to fight their way out until the QRF gets there. Normally, uh, we have come a long way since then. Um, but that's why the, the enemy likes to, particularly in Iraq, um, they, they like to hit soft targets because you know that they can't go toe to toe with an M1 Abrams. That's not going to go very well for them. There's quite a lot of funny videos. If you ever get a chance to check those out, um, or, you know, even, even a, uh, APC, you just, you can't. So they have to resort to guerrilla like tactics, such as ambushing uh, a soft target, like a supply convoy. So without giving away too much information that the enemy already knows, uh, let's go ahead and change to number 13 on our list. Very similar to our supply trucks. You'll also find these, uh, this is our tanker truck or maybe it might be water it doesn't matter it's a it's a tanker truck of some kind the one that's pulling it this is a little bit older like these have been around probably since the the 70s and 80s um but they are still in use like you will find national guard units for example that have this exact same truck i don't remember what the number designation is but it is an older oshkosh truck as far as the kit goes um this is another rocco mini tanks kit you can get this in tan. They actually also made it in white with UN um, on the door in black. Not sure why, but whatever. Uh, anyway, really do like this. It's very detailed. You can even open the hood if you want to. They give you a whole bunch of stuff, which I haven't really paid much, at much attention to, like mirrors, details, different front bumpers, um, mirrors for the trailer, obviously mirrors for the truck, different things for the tank. But again, I just really haven't paid that much attention to it. All right, down to our last two. Number 14, one of my favorite thing models of all time, especially military models. Uh, this is actually two different models uh, in one. So we have, which hopefully I can get up here without it taking off. We have the Oshkosh M1070 heavy equipment transporter. That's the tractor unit right here with the M1000 um, heavy equipment trailer. Now, both of these are by... Trident, and they're resin kits, which you have to build, assemble, uh, well, build and assemble are redundant, they're the same thing. You have to build them, sand them, paint them, detail them. Actually, they were pretty they they were they were pretty difficult for me. They were my first Trident kit that I used, so these are not perfect. If you look very close, despite my best efforts of trying to hide things, there's a lot of errors on here. Um, so I think at some point I may buy a new one and uh, and do this up a little bit better. But in terms of how this looks, I think it looks phenomenal, especially when it's pulling what it's designed to do. And that is to pull the M1 Abrams tank around. Give him a nice ride. Let's center him. There we go. And we even have the turret facing the correct way for an appropriate transport load. Nowadays, the trailer is about $45. The tractor unit is about $60, $65. So all told, you're looking to spend close to $100, which, again, is pretty expensive. But uh, it, they do look really good together. And, again, a lot of small details are included, such as a small winch, some extra tires, uh, a beacon light, a couple different versions of the ramp. So if you want to have it fold down or up for transport, they give you a little bit of flexibility there. But it's really quite fun. So what does that leave us? That leaves us with the last model I'll show you in this series. And that's... My personal favorite. Why? It's very unassuming. It's not really what you'd expect. It's not a tank. It's not an aircraft. It's not a super cool piece of construction military vehicle. But it's the M104 Wolverine Heavy Assault Bridge. Why do I think this thing is really cool? Not because of this particular model of it, which again is another old Bowley that I uh, repainted. Didn't quite turn out what I was going for because I was using some cheapo paint before I covered it with... Uh, actually just realized I didn't finish that part uh, before I covered it with Tamiya paint. So it doesn't really look the best. I am going to redo this. But anyway, this thing is super cool. So the new M104 Wolverines, the newer ones, these are on the undercarriage of the M1 Abrams tank. The older ones are on the M60 Patton tank undercarriage. So this thing actually allows you or allows a vehicle to cross... Um, 
an area of water, such as like a small river crossing. So it puts this down, it puts the bridge down over the water and drives across. So now it's on the other side. And that allows the advancing force to say, say they have a two and a half ton truck that's got to get across. So he's now across. Now we have a Hemet that's across. You get the idea. So when the force is across, he now drives to the other side that he's parked on, picks up the bridge, which he can now do. And the whole bridge vehicle, I guess the paint thickness is a bit thicker on here than I thought it was. The whole bridge vehicle can now join the rest of the military force and drive away with them. So I just think it's a really, really cool vehicle, and uh, it's it's something that you really can't have without. I know that they're working on a new version of this um, because there's a lot of issues with the with the the Wolverine. The army isn't exactly happy with this version of it, and it kind of costs a lot of money too, which is always an issue, especially at the highest, highest levels of uh, the government. So whatever. It's a really cool vehicle. Anyway, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this series. Um, let me know down in the comment section below which of these vehicles is your favorite and just as important why. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, you will be seeing this. It will premiere on Memorial Day. So make sure you take a moment and just whether you're by yourself, whether you're with your spouse or you're with your family or obviously the people you love, maybe you're on vacation, just take a moment to reflect that uh, today's not about barbecues. It's not about going on vacation. It is about those that paid the absolute ultimate sacrifice. So just take a minute and just give thanks and remember. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care and be safe. I'll see you in the next review.